want to express uh, having recently watched uh, uh, the movie Presidential Unchained, the movie that I was looking forward to because I kept, I had heard a rumor and a rumor stuck in my head and I was uh, looking through like web browsing and uh, man, surprisingly it was Nine Gag where he would talk about uh, what, what memes are propagated on the internet. Uh, it depicted that the, there was a point where uh, the actor uh, Leonardo DiCaprio who, pen, who plays uh, Candy in this in the film uh, had trouble uh, acting out his role because he felt, did not feel very comfortable using such abusive and uh, derogatory language in the film which uh, was an assault on his uh, uh, on his one as a colleague and he also considered a friend a, a outside the production value of Samuel Jackson it turns out Jamie Foxx was uh, the one that take, took a stance and told him like you do not need to be overly sensitive about this. We, uh, uh, this this type of thing uh, is something that uh, they would have seen back in the past in, in, in more uh, what was the less modernizing changes on, on certain aspects. But the, at the end of the day, you're playing the, the role of what corresponds you to your job, and that was uh, kind of like a kind of like subtle way for me to kind of uh, display. Um, Assertive and stoicness in terms of a uh, of things that would have been abusive and unfair to the time set upon uh, racial stereotypes, which uh, I can agree. Uh, hearing it on this perspective, it's still something uncomfortable for me to say a project that to someone because it has such derogatory and undermining meaning to people who don't deserve it because they've already done stuff to external myself in a manner that's very like respectful. Uh, so let's start uh, and talk about uh, a bit more about uh, uh, what I what how I felt the story carried on itself. I actually thought Jenko at the start of the film was not the main factor that kept that that took control and gave the sense of uh, power dynamics in the film, of leading you viewers into watching it. Uh, surprisingly, under introduction, he's just depicted as someone that's uh, a bit of a slave, but. And later on, an interjection and uh, interruption is brought about from Dr. Schurz. Dr. Schurz being a dentist and carrying a lot of uh, ambivalent emotion on his introduction being a dentist, but had shown some for, uh, some nature of being a bit of a serial killer. Turns out later on in the movie, you turn it, he is a bounty hunter, and even though he's got his title of, of, of uh, practice being a dentist, which is a bit off, because he, some people wanted to carry himself as a doctor, but uh, dentist is on his own title. Uh, so it still holds a decent amount of prestige. You could say that the title was a bit of a pseudo title because he's not, he has never really practiced into, uh, in, 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 into, that pro, into his studies of profession, which uh, does put in lines of being someone a bit more of a, that would uh, care for others. In this film, as I said, he cold heartedly just killed, uh, shot someone, and uh, manipulated uh, the slave traders to get something that he wanted. Namely, he picked out Jamie Foxx, who was playing out to Django, because he knew that he had, he thought he had some use to him to be able to do what he wanted to do. Um, so uh, the character uh, takes him to lead and, and brings it in, and then tries to kind of like. Uh, upgrade him in the sense that giving him opportunities and a social standing, he almost not exactly equal, but like he was trying to bring him into a, into a stance of saying at some point he was going to be seen as a partner. So I think there was a bit of resistance in in accepting that for Django because Django is a slave, as you say. There was a lot of aspects where uh, which was interesting that I thought could have been fleshed up a bit better. But um, you know they did what they wanted to do, in that, and and uh, they did what they wanted to do. And where it came down to, it, it's still a story where I, I uh, the underdog goes out and tries to save someone who I think is his wife. But it wasn't fleshed out. The gradual build up of certain scenes for me, I felt could have been built up better. So it, I'm talking corresponding of seeing Patrick or Scar, but and then I see these actions put in front of me and visualize it and they have a more pronounced effect when I look back at the scar. So there's marks on the, on Jingle's back, you know, and most people can make recognition that this is abusive behavior, whipping, lashing for a slave. 
Then on the later on, there are scenes where a girl is taken and then they are whipped. And I think it came to the lines of some people that the, the Chingo knew already, the brittle brushes. That's why I understood when I watched this movie. So when they, when they, when he came into, when this was depicted in front of me, and I just kind of remnant, uh, remembered that he had similar scars and I, it provided more emotional impact on me. I could empathize and say, oh God, that's nasty. Uh, from uh, from from where it was projected, um, and I thought that was a good way. I, it's not really a show me tell me thing, but like it's kind of like I build up these scars, and then it provokes more emotion because now you see them right in front of you. Uh, I, I I wouldn't say I know exactly how the best way to describe that the kind of uh, implication technique to like evoke strong emotions on the audience and what so. Uh, but uh, I felt that's what. That's how these the scenes were played out to make it that evoked emotion when I, I saw it get played out in particular. Um, so uh, you can also say um, so you could say that the the, the Doctor Shook plays a bit of a, a caricature of what is a beam on my circumstances, which is a bit more different. But like is the concept isn't far, so foreign to call it he's a villain <laughs> he's a villain in in a role where he's kind of with the protagonist of the character so he's a bounty hunter but he holds the title of a dentist which gives you a bit of ambivalent feelings because throughout the action when he tried to recruit to go i was on uh suspense because i couldn't figure out if like he was going to backstab him because that's so evident and apparent to something that you that would be on that that would play playing that role as a villain. You just don't feel you could trust them. But over the sequence of events of the movie, as they start to do some more things together, I felt that they did develop a certain amount of loyalty to go as far as to say that Doctor Shook was willing to go out uh, to go and approach uh, well Candyland uh, uh, to be able to uh, uh, establish. Uh, uh, particular goal which was to save uh which was to save what's the name Brumela's uh Brumela's yeah Brumilda Brumilda's uh who is a significant other of uh Tachengo. now as I said before it wasn't stressed out how much and I, I personally would prefer it but, you know th th this is their production film they they can choose how they want to do something but I would prefer to see more scenes maybe in flashbacks just to show how much attachment and why the main character is so has such a strong attachment towards this wo this woman that's been captured into the premise as a as a slave in the owner of a, a renowned famous repertoire of uh, by the name of candy and yeah that, that was played was a true villain in the story right <laughs> so um So I, I have said the dynamics of the starting of the movie is controlled a lot more by Dr. Schutz. The uh, Django later on takes over, and then uh, as as the movie progresses, he it, uh, his uh, scenes get played out, uh, and and he's able to save his girl, which is good, right? Uh, but like in terms of like how the, the power dynamics shifts, Dr. Schutz carries that a bit more with Jamie Foxx slowly coming in because he kind of is take, took him as a slave and bringing him into the mentorship of being a bounty hunter, which is what he does. Um, so so I, I also want to just stress out um, a bit of the power beat dynamics being displayed, not just for uh, cold-hearted nature of like being able to kill someone without a, 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 a flinching or having a second thought, which dehumanizes people, uh, but like the fact that he could um, get away with these things and hold authority with his social standing to to control a circumstance, a situation and, and circumstances. I mean, that's why I also felt like the, the character is a bit of a, like a loose mentally a sociopath, just because he was able to also kill authority figures in a town which is kind of taken pieces. He, he didn't hold back killing the sheriff and he didn't hold back thing his demands for what he wanted in terms of, uh, in lines of what you call, uh, the deputy later on. Um, okay, so next I want to do, uh, talk about 
certain things that I thought were kind of like nice, nice lines, li nice lines that were played through. So particularly what the uh, plot was good it was um, a good dis distinction to separate emotional events while wholly affordable weapons. This is when they're on the scene and both of them are talking. Jamie Foxx says, uh, when uh, Dr. Shirk makes mention of a certain events and lines of things that felt that felt personal to him, he said, not while I have my my freedom and not while I have my gun. And uh, without ever saying it directly, he tried, he, told, he was trying to tell you, look, I cannot, when you, when addressing these things or talking, um, I may act and react in a manner that's very uh, emotional distress because I am still at, that point, at one point a slave which uh, holds a lot of resentment for his circumstances, what, he, what the, uh, the Dr. Schertz was trying to tell him and get him to do. Uh, in different scenes, uh, Jingo also expressed saying things uh, like, uh, here, sorry. Uh, he has a disparity of feelings and buildings, you call it, because he has to play. He has he has his own sentiments, but he has to play a role to fit in. So the role is in a very risky position, where the crowd he tries to fit in discriminates against people of his own skin color, and always will have a role where he they can be seen they can see him as being dispensable for him trying to fit in. The character also plays a bit of risk when he's in that uh, when that role when he begins to introduce the uh, candy vans troops because. Generally, um, he tried to act in a manner. Uh, of taking a stance of authority against other, uh, against slaves, right, which can easily uh, been put into a situation where other people would have turned against him, even if he, he was announcing himself uh, in the role that was inside of the bounty hunter. Uh, risky, yeah, very risky. That's a current situation that kind of uh, that, that could have played out to a situation where they would have turned against him as well. <laughs> That's why I thought it was interesting. Um, so um, I also wanted to, to take uh, other aspects, uh, and this is just to highlight again the emotional attachment to the character because it's not overly emphasized on the development or the build up. But basically, Jingo goes take a shower. Uh, uh, a, a bath into the water lake, and he sees a, uh, his loved ones or significant other there, which I thought was emotional feelings of grief, not knowing what happened if his wife was still okay before they went to go discover it. Um, there are certain scenes that are also very cute to me, or I, <laughs> that put a spark to me. One scene was a uh, scene director Tarantula <laughs> appearing in a small cameo appearance inside the film, which I would never would have. Figured out that I didn't look into the production value, uh, or new production value in, in a sense. So <laughs> Toronto like appears and plays out a role for a minor a, a side character, and I, I thought that's great. You know, limelight is a bit shine on people who are normally not the main focus of the film. <laughs> and um, other aspects of like um, <laughs> Jenga appearing and look through Bernilda and Bernilda. A reaction response, which is very very cute and so out of line for what I expect in moder modernization of like uh, women being uh, women towards men of uh, interest. So the girl goes, oh. <laughs> and I just like that's old school. <laughs> um, and that made me laugh. And I thought that was kind of funny, uh, cute in a sense, but yeah. Um. So um, the, the other thing I thought would be a better build up in the film was in lines of like uh, near the uh, middle scene, both the main antagonist, uh, Can uh, Candy, and also uh, Dr. Schutz, who not an antagonist, but has villainous properties in his role that he's playing, both shoot out and like, kill each other, leaving the ending for war of something Jingo goes into to clean up the rest of the uh, house and to uh, in the end successfully save his wife. I thought the buildup would have been better if you know either of those dynamic antagonists had kind of survived that fight and then later on Jigango would have to re-engage them in a manner to uh, peak the climax. Because for me those two characters hold the most significant afforded uh, uh, power uh, sequence and instead it was given to Samuel Jackson's role character which is kind of like 
is uh, the house owner of uh, Kenny. Um, but you know, um, this is not like a fiction. This, this is, but you know, uh, it didn't. It still played out okay. I just felt where the drama was built up was should have focused on those characters for the ending climax for maybe a bit of a better excitement. I don't know. It, it's not that the role was played bad. It was just um, that Samuel Jackson's character in this film never really played out more uh, strong power dynamics except when he had insight. Insight and knowing of Jingo and also one of the uh, maids had a stronger attachment by looking at their depiction and saying they're here for ultimate motive which led to the drama into the into the place of Candyland. Um, but it, it wasn't too bad. I thought the acting was good for uh, Samuel Jackson actually. It was pretty good. Um, There was a nice explanation of irony where I think um, under, the, under the mentorship of, uh, of uh, Dr. Schutz, he brings into uh, the aspect of saying, like, uh, I, uh, he, made, he made Django kill um, a father in front of his son uh, because he, they're bounty hunters and they were going to claim bounty. And later on, they put the depiction later on in the movie that, uh, okay. This, uh, I remember a man who told me to shoot a, a man in front of his son. And the line on us was like, you told me this is part of my world and it's dirty. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get dirty. <laughs> that, that, that line was depiction of like paraphrasing. It's, it's kind of like it's the same idea that I kind of said that way. It's, 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 I, I, I don't know, I just get all the reviews, but like, it's the irony here, I guess. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I forgot to like, introduce my rating. So, I like this movie. Uh, but, it was better, better than Daybreak, in my personal uh, opinion. Better than Daybreak. Um, but, um, do I put it other in terms of films that Christina Phoenix Fox already? Uh, in this regard? Um, between, because... Spider-Man 2, uh, his character is kind of placed on a more superficial basis. The action scenes, I thought, were more a highlight for Spider-Man 2 rather than character build-up in comparison to this one, where it, it, this is more emphasis on his character being the main uh, main uh, hero. Well, hero, vigilante, vigilante, best way of saying, <sighs> close to it. I get, I'm going to watch another movie, and I'm going to, so I, I'm going to say it's the first six. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one also had some, some feeling for what I want to review and watch and consume and share to you guys on films that uh, I thought I'd check out for uh, the purpose and I hope you guys check this out and interact with my content because like the discussion I want to welcome it and if you guys like it or disagree with anything please comment like uh, I have a prize for anybody that does this and does uh, and the best comment uh, gets extra perks for whatever I want to give in my area ideally <laughs> thank you very much for paying attention and i hope you uh enjoy your weekend and find ways to have fun uh just doing what you what you guys look like so movies you know this is this, yeah uh have fun Hey everyone, thank you for putting the effort to watch uh, the effort I placed on making something of an entertaining video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I said before, uh, it's not for us, but like, I really would appreciate any uh, uh, contribution and support you give to this channel as it gives me more motivation and uh, more incentive to enjoy more uh, video creating and, and uh, content creation. Uh, if you find that the content uh, drifts away at any point, you can always subscribe. It's no big deal. Again, it doesn't do, it doesn't mean much. Uh, it doesn't take much from you, and but it means a whole bunch of me. And it feel it would feel great if you were just reward my efforts of trying to be, uh, you know, positive and contributionary. Thank you so much. Bye.